too many Brought. Your Majesty. Exactly. Very well put. Too many Brought. I don't understand. There are just as many Brought. Majesty as are required, neither more nor less. <laughs> Welcome back to the MVPN video series. In this video, we introduce and then take a deep dive into the BGP source active auto discovery route. We also cover the problematic scenarios in MVPN that this route has been created to solve and how it goes about solving those problems. Let's begin. Deja vu time. The topic of BGP SAFI and the NLRI was introduced back in video 14. In particular, we discussed how most of the features of PIM have been adopted to BGP and VPN. For a refresher, refer to video 14, link in the description box below. But in this video, we continue that journey by introducing the route that on the surface replaces the PIM register message, but we of course will first scratch, then strip, then annihilate that surface to try to get to the full story. It is a tough ask to introduce this route without referencing to something that we have not yet covered with next generation MVPNs. I am referring to the two major philosophies on how to support ASM or any source multicast in the customer network via an SPM VPN. As a first option, we can have what are called RPT SPT MVPNs, or in other words, MVPNs that support both RPTs, rendezvous point trees, and SPTs or shortest path trees in the SP core. Any ASM scenarios that we have covered thus far in the series up until and including this video are examples of RPT, SPT, and VPNs. Nothing new there. The other major design philosophy is to fully support ASM in the customer network, but by allowing only SPTs or shortest path trees to cross the MVPN. Appropriately, this design is called the SPT only MVPN. We have not covered it so far, and if we ever do, there would have to be a whole video dedicated to that, such as its complexity. Back to the RPT SPT MVPN, however, the source active AD route in this type of MVPN facilitates the SPT switch over mechanism. The how of it is essentially the rest of this video. Now then, Let's take a look at the packet itself. The RD, well, that's the route distinguisher for the L3 VPN VRF the MVPN is configured for. It also provides the exact same functionality as it does in the layer 3 VPN. As with the other route types in BGP MVPN, such as, you know, the C multicast route, the next two fields together describe the source IP. If you've seen those videos, by the way, if not, then why not? But if you've seen those videos, you would know that the length is needed so that a single NLRI can facilitate the distribution of both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Getting past the length, the multicast source field is fairly simple in this route versus some of the other routes. In this route, it simply indicates an active CS, in other words, an active source in the customer's site. Looking at it another way, this is the IP that will be found in the source IP field of the multicast stream packets themselves. Simple. Next is the group length, which once again, IPv4, IPv6, and then the multicast group. Just like the source field, fairly simple and contains the CG. This is the actual multicast group in the customer side that a stream would be addressed to. Just like the source field, the address here would be the same as the destination multicast group in the actual multicast packets. Again, fairly simple. But unfortunately, we are all out of simple for the remainder of this video. For the next few minutes, you may want to pay some extra attention to how we utilize this route in an RPT, SPT, and VPN. So let's do it. Before we begin this explanation, a quick word about our old friend PIM. 
The rest of this video is dependent heavily on PIM operations, such as registers, joins, prunes, but most importantly, the SPT switchover mechanism. The video assumes that you are more than just familiar with an overview of that process, in that you understand at least some of the actual packet exchanges that PIM undertakes to pass the state uh, to the appropriate parties. For example, if you're unaware of the PIM S, G, RPT prune message, you might struggle to understand the crux of this video. To refresh on all things PIM, we recommend the CCIE, JNCIE, IP multicast lecture series on, on the same channel because, well, <laughs> why is that surprising? But specifically, the PIM SPT switchover process was covered in lecture 10 of that series, or the Advanced PIM Sparse Mode Deep Dive Part 3. Also, we are assuming that you've watched the C multicast routes video from this series, the MVPN series, and since a lot of material here is a literal repeat of those scenarios, we will not go into the nitty gritty details here. That would be video 17 of the MVPN series with those keeping track. All these links, by the way, in the description box below. Now to our scenario. We essentially had to choose a state to start from, and the choices were either an active receiver with no sender or an active sender with no receiver yet. We are choosing to go with the latter state with an active sender present. This is the CS that, the customer, that in the customer site sits behind PE3. Furthermore, let's assume that the PIM DR for the CS and the CRP that is in the site behind PE1, they have already uh, exchanged the register and register stop messages. Well, so they are basically in a steady state. This further means that both of those routers has an, have an SPT state for the CS CG in their M route table. The M ribs for the CRP and the first hop router in this picture indicate that state. No other routers in the network should be aware of this S, G state because simply there are no receivers in this network. This is where we start. So divert your attention to CR, which sits in the site behind PE2, and it now wants to receive traffic for the group CG. It will start off by sending a star, G membership report to its designated router, which essentially becomes the last hop router. The last hop router takes the report, creates a star comma G PIM join, and sends it to the RPF neighbor for the CRP. This join ends up on PE2, which then creates the BGP MVPN C multicast share tree route. This route is advertised to PE1, PE1 converts it back into a PIM star comma G join, which is received by the CRP. As a result of that join, CRP adds the star comma G state in its multicast routing table. So now it has a star comma G state that matches groupwise to the S comma G state. Uh, let's clear some real estate here and move on. Now, the CRP is aware of at least one sender, CS, for this group, CG. It knows that as a rendezvous point, it must facilitate the delivery of the packets for this CS CG over the share tree. So in order to receive the packets first, it creates an S, G join towards the RPF neighbor for the CS. This S, G join ends up on PE1, which then creates an MVPN source tree join route with that information. The route is advertised to PE3, and PE3 converts it back into a PIM join and sends that to the FHR. Time to deliver the packet, so let's get some of these pieces off of the board and get the traffic moving forward. So the first hop router now starts forwarding the CSCG traffic over the SPT. Traffic reaches PE3, which might then use the default or the data MDT to forward that traffic over to the other PEs. Even if the tree is default or IPMSI, let us for the moment only focus on PE1. PE1 receives the traffic over the core and forwards it to the CRP. 
CRP accepts that traffic on the SPT and distributes it over to the RPT, as it does. So it sends the traffic back over the RPT to PE1, which this time will send the traffic again over the core to PE2. Again, the attentive viewer might have noticed that for an IPMSI, the traffic will go to all of the PEs in the MVPN, but we are focusing only on PE2 at this moment. PE2 further forwards the packet over the RPT to the LHR, which creates the S, G state, and CR has the flow that it desired. Let's clear the board one more time and just keep the S, G state on the LHR. Time for the SPT switchover. The LHR will realize that it knows of an actual source for the CG and it will initiate an S, G join to create the SPT. This join reaches PE2, which this time creates a source tree join BGP route and advertises it to PE3. PE3 stores this route. But please realize, because of the source tree join earlier, from PE1, that was the PE for the rendezvous point, the S, G state is already present on PE3. So now let's look, look over the actual traffic pattern since the signaling is complete. Like we said before, as the traffic comes in from the FHR, it might actually get distributed to all the PEs via the IPMSI. In any case, since we have completed the signaling from both PE1 and PE2, even in the case of selective PMSI or data MDTs, both sites would receive that traffic. Continuing on the PE1 side, the traffic once again reaches the CRP, which puts it on the RPT. Traffic hairpins back to PE1 and goes back to the core again, this time being received by all the other PEs, including PE2. Do you see the problem here? In three, two, one. We end up with duplicate traffic. Not the best use of resources to say the least. But wait, should that also not happen for regular non-MVPN IP multicast? I mean, the process is the same after all. And the answer is, of course it will happen even there. But we have mechanisms in place in PIM that prevent this duplication of traffic. As noted earlier in the video, all that information, if you're not privy to it already, is available in Lecture 10 of our IP Multicast Lecture Series, link in the description box below. So basically, we need to handle this situation in MVPN and the designers, those smart designers, they've already thought about it. So once again in this video, we have purposely held back information from you, but really only in order to demonstrate why that information is needed in the first place. So the whole process of SPT switchover in an MVPN, it does not happen quite as exactly as demonstrated just a moment ago. In fact, what's about to happen is much closer to the actual process. I say much closer because there can be so many steady states in multicast, it is hard to cover all of them. This is merely one of the possibilities, but it suffices as an example. Starting from the last hop router again, there is an SPT join to start things off. PE once again creates the source tree route. By the way, we could have easily come from the CRP because the RP is also sending an SPT join and it has valid receivers for the group. So like I said, many possibilities. This route is advertised to PE3. This is where the MVPNs behave differently. PE3 will now, if it has a state for that CSCG, which it really should, because remember the SPT switchover process won't occur otherwise, so it must have a state, and it will generate the source active AD route. This is critical to correctly signaling the switchover successfully. The route is advertised to all the PEs in the MVPN. Pay attention to PE1 and CRP for a second. As PE1 receives this route over the core, it will realize that for this CS and only the CS, the RP no longer needs to send the traffic to the MVPN over the SPT. Why? 
Well, the source active message that PE1 has just received that must have spread this information across the MVPN and any other PEs in the MVPN that need traffic from that source, well, they can now receive that traffic directly from the advertising PE or PE3 in our case. So what does PE1 do here? Well, it's now PE1's responsibility to prune the MVPN core from the CSCG or the SPD state. And the RP must also be informed not to send the traffic from that particular source to that particular group. In other words, the PE will follow the PIM SPD switchover process by sending an S, G, RPT prune to the RP to signal this idea to the RP. The RP then will prune itself off of the SPT and if there are no other receivers within the site, then that's all that happens. Astoundingly many possibilities, but in our simple network, it will prune itself off. And the result, no duplicate traffic. Only traffic that is received over the SPT is from PE3 to PE2. Problem solved with the aid of the source active AD route. Up next, we'll take a quick gander back to the demo we left off in video 18 and study this route, route type 5 in a working MVPN. The profile will remain profile 11. Till then, I'd like to thank you for joining us and urge you to stay tuned for our next video. Thanks.